There comes a time when we realize that we shouldn't trust anyone. Now let's think about our end users and let's think about the level of trust that we have for them. Do you remember the Cisco security user suites? With the Cisco security suites, let's look at user protection. Within user protection, we have email threat defense, Cisco secure access, secure endpoint, and duo. But we want to concentrate on secure access. Secure access is like a GPS. A driver doesn't care how he gets to a location and there's multiple paths to get to that particular location. Just like an end user doesn't care how he gets onto the network, it could be direct connect, some sort of SaaS application, VPN, or even something now called zero trust network access. Once an end user authenticates to the network, Secure Access allows them to reach their application of choice by any means necessary. What we're going to do, we're going to hone in on Zero Trust Network Access. We will discover the feature set that sets us apart from our competitors. Continue. As we look at the overall architecture of Secure Access, we don't want to concentrate on the how or the apps, but the users. And we want to look at the endpoint that the users utilize and how they access the applications and what makes us different. Users access the applications in two methods. It can be a managed endpoint or an unmanaged endpoint. Those methods fall into four categories, VPN, ZTA module, Direct Connect and Clientless ZTA. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna concentrate on two methods and two categories, ZTA and Clientless ZTA. You got to hear this. <laughs> there are two different versions of ZTA, Zero Trust Access, depending upon the use case that you have. If you have a client device that you manage or a contractor device that you don't manage, it fits the bill for both parties. What? This all starts with the endpoint. So you're familiar with AnyConnect and you're familiar with so many different types of agents that you have on an endpoint. So now we combine everything into one simple client. And part of that client, we have something called a ZTA module. Cisco Secure Client, the artist formerly known as AnyConnect, now helps you with that agent sprawl. Once the Zero Trust Access module is enabled in the secure client, you have two protocols that help enable ZTA, which is the mask and court protocol. In addition, the ZTA module uses something called a socket intercept. The socket intercept sits closer in the stack towards the application. This allows ZTA to understand the different process which are generated from the application to do micro segmentation. Mask is comprised of two different protocols, the QUIC and HTTP2. So if one QUIC or HTTP2 is unavailable, it has the capability to fall back to one Add another. That up and you get... So here's the kicker. This is not a tunneling, but a streaming protocol. So we're able to access applications and stream those protocols or that application back to the end user. To help mapping with the end user to the stream application, Mask uses a identity aware proxy, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Mask has a capability to do process level multiplexing and segmentation. Fancy way of saying that I can separate my Chrome traffic from my Firefox traffic, and both would be separate streams. Quick has the ability to change IP addresses without renegotiation of that particular session. So that means if it's wired, wireless, or even a cellular network, it's transparent to the end user. A few more benefits of Quick is the fact that it's encrypted from end to end and it's incredibly fast. Also, you may want to consider. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now let's recap the architectural components of ZTA. 
So you have the next generation protocol that we discussed previously, which was the mask and quick protocol. In addition, you have that identity or proxy, and this helps maps the end user and postures it device to the stream application or resource that it needs. You also have the micro segmentation, and this micro segmentation is based upon not only an individual endpoint, but per application and per process. The concept of synthetic addresses or synthetic IP addresses allows the enterprise to hide its application's IP addresses from the actual end user. Oh Furthermore, these ZTA functions are actually built into the native operating system themselves. The endpoints are isolated from the applications due to the identity of our proxy. So now you have that separation of duties. ZTA has the capability to provide the same level of security even if it's a cloud-based application or an on-prem application. And finally, you have TPM, Trusted Platform Module, and this prevents key hijacking and transfer. When users enroll with ZTA, that particular key is locked to that particular device. The private keys for those certificates are bound to hardware. Boys and girls, let's take a look at the dashboard. Oh, shit, I'm a man. Now let's jump into the Secure Access dashboard and let's look at the workflows. And let's look at how easy it is to set this thing up. You have to configure the infrastructure, secure the resources and the access to the applications. But what we wanna look at is the end user connectivity. Let's look at how we can have applications take advantage of CTA. As we navigate to the HQ Server 1, we actually can see what are the connection methods for secure access for the end users. Now let's take a closer look at the internet resources. In the internet drawer that pops out from the side panel, we get an idea of the successful connections, the block connections, the connection methods, the resource details, and addresses. Let's drill even further with the activity search. And let's look at things that were blocked. Now let's go back to the overview page. From this particular view, I can see the connection methods as well. This is done in a unified dashboard for traffic logs for private access and internet connection. Now let's drill down into client list ZTNA. From here, I can filter all my responses. I can save searches. I can customize columns and even filter back to ZTNA client based. Now let's select a source of a user and drill down into the details for that particular person. From here, you get the opportunity to look at the location, the IP address, the browser, the operating system, even the rule name associated with that particular source that initiated that connection. Now let's jump to the access policy and examine the rule name that we just saw. From the side drill that pops out, I see a quick summary of the sources, destinations, and even a rule order, but let's examine a little bit more detail and let's edit the rule. Now we won't make any changes, but I want us to take a look at a few things that are applicable for ZTA. The endpoint requirement for posture adds an extra level of security. We want to look at two types of posture profiles for zero trust client-based and browser-based. Now keep in mind a client-based access permits more posture requirements than a clientless access. So you should tailor your profile to the type of access. Some of the zero trust access posture attributes are supporting the operating systems, firewall checks, endpoint security agents, system passwords, disencryption, and browser checks. As I come to a close, I'm hoping there's something that I shared with you that gave you a better understanding of Cisco's secure access and zero trust. That's all, folks.